<laughs> oh mate, every time I do, every time I go live, I just look at my hair. What are you doing? Just <coughs> wait for a few people to log on. I'll wait for the eyes. So. Good evening. Do you know, <clears throat> I woke up this morning, probably about five o'clock this morning, and then started looking at the videos. And when you're in the middle of a moment, you don't realize just how big or special that moment is. So looking back and once you come out of it, you have the opportunity to just realize just how great yesterday was. Unbelievable. For me, the feeling of seeing that support, also the passion in everyone that's there. Again, I'd say that the media have showed their complete contempt and their attitude the metro headline this is one of the biggest red papers in britain stella drinking tommy robinson supporters there's probably thousands of people there out of thousands of people three or four people might have had a can of stella and that's the headline they use because of the impeccable behavior and there was nothing negative to report. They then focused on a bit of litter on the ground and run headlines about that. Look at the litter left by Tommy Robinson supporters. The litter and the area they were focusing on was where Unite Against Fascism, all 15 of them, were demonstrating. So, I just, I thought I'd have a catch up just today. I'm feeling rough, man, I'm feeling rough. Um, the, the son, Tommy Robinson, and the, and the male. Tommy Robinson, straight from demonstration to, I don't know, implying I was getting drunk in the House of Lords. I was drinking water in the House of Lords. I did have a few drinks yesterday to let my hair down. Um, who wouldn't have? But not in the House of Lords. It's like just every angle they have, they try to demonise and tarnish and make it look so that they can fit this narrative and image of the person that they want you to be. Not the person you are, but the person that they want you to be. The person that they want to tell the world you are. Um, and it's them, the BBC reported, Tony Robinson addresses his 400 supporters outside court. Everyone's got social media. The British public will watch our videos and they'll know you're lying. Every media outlet, again, with the, the idea of Ezra to bring independent, not journalists on our side, but independent journalists to pay their travel and their, and their hotels to come and report on the case. I've just realised, follow those journalists, I'll put a link to them, I'll put their names on here, and I'm following their reporting. And to find out that one of them who was sitting with the mainstream media in court, and they were all conspiring together, this is Associated Press, the main news networks, they were conspiring together on how many to say they, how many people to say were at our demonstration to downplay the numbers. They are not there as journalists to report the truth to you, the public. They are lawyers. And I'm glad, so glad again I've called them out and since then I've just followed all their news articles. If there's not a conspiracy, if there's not a conspiracy, how come my court case was not, not heard yesterday because it was too complex after the judge read my evidence and my statement. Not one single newspaper, from what I understand, none have reported anything that was said in my statement. <laughs> the main evidence that got the case taken down and none of them have reported it. None of them. It's like, come on. All they're running with. It's like, it's like, what are you doing? 
You're just, but they don't even realise. The more they do this, because the public are now watching. As there's eight and a half thousand people watching this live. If you'll all kindly share this video, it will be seen. But it's, it's like you, you're exposed. They expose themselves every time. People know they're lying. They know what they're saying. Today, do you know what? The, the fella's that irrelevant. I've never even heard of him. Some Scottish MP today stood up and made comments and accusations about myself. Now, so people understand, he has parliamentary privilege, which means they can say what they want in Parliament and no one can do anything about it, even if it's lies. So he stood up today in Parliament and he said, I am a racist, violent thug and that I spend my days incite, that I incite racial hatred. If I incited racial hatred, considering the government want to silence me and stop me, don't you think I'd have been arrested for inciting racial hatred? He can stand up, make all of these accusations with zero evidence to, to, to what he's saying. And then, like, I'm quite small, but what's his name, Burko? The little chubby, dwarfy looking fella who's the Speaker of the House of Commons, is he? He then backs up saying, yes, well, I completely agree with your assessment of who that man is. He had know nothing about me. <laughs> I completely agree. If ever there was a video of people from a different class looking down on other people, it's these two morons without even realising that when they do this, everyone's going to watch that video and just think, you traitors are so out of touch. So, so out of touch. And you're looking down upon us. And it's not just, when they make these comments, I think, you're not just, it's not just a comment about me. <laughs> I've just seen someone say, how's, how's your new 950,000 pound house? The house I'm sitting in <laughs> is a house I built, yeah? With land I bought, actually for 200,000 pound. <laughs> with a mortgage, <laughs> you morons. But anyway, that's again, the mainstream media building lies. Just building anything they can find. The Sun newspaper are currently harassing after my solicitors trying to, they're trying to run a story now because I said I, I sacked my lawyers. Now, the, it was the wrong word. What happened was I got rid, of, got rid of the QC. Not my solicitors. Carson K had been my solicitors. And I got rid of the QC. And it was the QC who was, who was trying to get me to go guilty. So I'm so glad I didn't. And I'm so glad I did that. So, yeah, it's just... Um, it's unbelievable, really. No, none of them have reported it. None of them reported what was said in my statement. None of them reported the fact that, that other journalists have um, broke the same reporting restriction. None of them. They've all just focused on anything they can use to paint anything negative. When there was nothing negative yesterday, there was actually a, I'd say, a festival or a jubilant atmosphere outside the Old Bailey by thousands of hard-working, decent British people. But of course, that would, that, they'd never report that. They'd never report that. And this case was exposed again for what it is. And all the journalists, do I have any regrets? They need to be going and finding Judge Marston and asking him if he has any regrets. Um, so this MP, the MP that stood up today and made all these accusations... My words to him would be simple. If you're a man of your word, and you would stand by your word, come out of Parliament and repeat what you said about me. Repeat what you said where you haven't got parliamentary privilege, which would prevent me from suing your sad ass because you made statements about me which are complete lies. And you know they're lies. And you all know they're lies. But you just think, and you can't even see, it's like Sky News done this. I had a meeting this morning with a barrister. Um, I was back in London first thing this morning to meet with a barrister. To discuss, I'm looking at options now to go on the offensive for some of the things that have happened and things that have been said about me, which are complete lies. Complete lies that they can't back up. I know they can't back them up. But obviously he uses parliamentary privilege to run a headline. The headline all now goes around... Whereas what they think is, they think that by saying this, and this headline that is running around now about me being a loathsome, um, a loathsome, basically just slamming me by Burke or whatever his name is. I think it's by this, this little bloke who's in the House of Commons who's had 
accusation after accusation after accusation of bullying against him, who they have their own sexual problems going on in the House of Commons, and he should get his own house in order before he starts trying to slam me. Um, but again, neither of these men would say what they've said outside of the House of Parliament, because then they'd be in a courtroom and then they'd have to stand there and look ridiculous, having zero evidence to back up their claims. Unbelievable. And you saw the reaction, yeah? You all saw the reaction they've had because I sat and had a meal after I was invited by Lord Pearson with <coughs> Jared Batham and others in Parliament. Could you imagine, could you imagine if I stood for Parliament? Could you imagine if I was voted in? Could you imagine the scenes <laughs> inside Parliament? <laughs> it's, it's also, I've always said I don't want to be a politician, but they, there's, no, there's actually no one in, that, in our establishment, not one person that's an elected MP that stands and speaks openly and honestly about the real problems in this country. There's not one. There is not one. What a sad state of affairs. Look to Holland. Look to France. Look at the Front National and Marine Le Pen in France. They have mayors, MPs, all over the whole country. They're all speaking openly and honestly. Look to, look to any, other, any other parliament in Europe. They all have representatives of their people, of the people's, the people's movements, the anti-establishment, uh, freedom-loving parties across Europe, all have representation. We don't. We have none. That, at some point, is going to have to change. And... <laughs> and, uh... I think that when I watch these videos, I just think... The average person is going to watch you standing up there with your posh voice looking down upon us whilst you spout lies that most people will know are lies. Um, and it's you, I think, that come across far worse when you make these accusations and you stand there pompously, s pompously slamming and slandering me. Where I don't have any, this is my only opportunity to defend myself on social media, which is why you're working tirelessly to remove me from social media. I had my Twitter account removed, I've had two strikes off YouTube in the last month. Three strikes and your YouTube account is closed down. What they've given me strikes for without telling me exactly what it is. Was well, for a, a, I've done an interview on German TV. They've given me a strike for that, for hate. You know, if it was hate, I'd be arrested for it. Okay? Now, so I, I currently haven't uploaded anything onto my YouTube channel because I believe the strikes last three months. So they are using, just like Twitter did, and there's a video of Labour MPs grilling the CEO of YouTube, asking why Tommy Robinson's videos are on YouTube. If ever I've seen an, an example of fascism, it is when a government is pressurising a private company in order to remove someone's views because the government don't like them. Not because they break any laws, but that pressure, just like the pressure would have been put on Twitter after Darren Osborne, after they opened up a court case in in, on Darren Osborne's court case saying that I, I had direct Twitter messages with Darren Osborne, which again, was a complete lie. But that was enough basis to put, to put pressure on Twitter to then have me removed. And they're doing now the same with YouTube. And eventually, it will be with Facebook. So, we better make the most of this while we have it. And, um, I've appealed the YouTube strikes. I've appealed them. So I don't want to give them the excuse. I might now have to not use YouTube for the next eight weeks. But um, yeah, that's it. I just thought I'd give my, my views on a couple of the instances, the media again, and the thank yous. Uh, if you've watched, I had the, the thank. I've thanked everyone when I was on stage. Um, yeah. This movement needs to go political. It has to go political. There has to be a political option for all of you people who are feeling 
not listened to, silenced. Um, I've, yeah, I'm going to start a new campaign tomorrow, and I'm going to give an update on I Am Soldier X as well. But I'll wait until I've got some finalised information. I'll be handing that petition in next week. Um, so to everyone who signed it, thank you very much. If you haven't signed it, it's at standwithourlads.com. Um, I'll be delivering that, and then I'll be giving you an update on the situation with the soldiers. We've had six soldiers now who have we've linked up with a lawyer, who the lawyer's been discussing options with them. But again, I'll, I'll do a proper video to detail where we're at early next week on that. Um, yeah, my throat, man. When I was giving my speech, I couldn't even, I could hardly speak. I could hardly speak. But, uh, again, the curry was great. Papa Jay's. There's one in Lewin, there's one in Milton Keynes. Beautiful. And I'll just say again, that, um, yeah, just that every single person that turned up, I know you travel from far, um, I know you book days off, and you have to understand how how much it mean how much it meant to me how much it means to me and how much of a difference i think it's made i think to be honest yeah I've got a connection so thank you again yeah thank you again and um i can now i'm not in limbo anymore so now i can make my plans on what i want to do and i want to do a lot i want to do a lot um yeah, again, I'll update you with the plans as and when they're happening. So, thank you very much.